time now for the morning rush and we start with Kristen Curry. Grab the umbrella before you leave the house this morning. We are looking at the possibility and the likelihood of scattered to even widespread showers and storms. Best coverage will be the northern two thirds of the state, including the Albuquerque metro area. Overnight into tomorrow, much drier, likely to finish up Friday with a clear sky and warm temperatures. Sarah? Four officers are on standard administrative leave and a suspect is recovering in the hospital after an officer involved shooting in northwest Albuquerque. Now police were sent to this neighborhood off of Unser near Ure after receiving a call from a woman who said her boyfriend had just beaten her up. When officers arrived, they found the man in the street. They say they gave multiple commands, but he didn't comply and threatened the officers. That's when officers fired less lethal and lethal shots at the man. The statement the suspect allegedly made to officers officers that is now being investigated coming up in the five facts. We're well, still waiting to learn more from police about a body found in a drainage ditch in the North Valley last night. That person was discovered yesterday near 4th Street to Guadalupe. Their identity has not been released at this time. As soon as we learn more details on this, we'll pass it on to you right here on KRQE. New this morning, an investigation is underway into an ambush style attack on five U.S. Army Special Ops forces in Africa that left three Green Beret soldiers dead. The two other American soldiers also hurt in that attack are said to be stable. Authorities said they were ambushed while on patrol in Niger. A group affiliated with Al Qaeda is suspected to be behind that attack. As you wake up today, police are still trying to figure out who shot at two school buses carrying high school athletes in two separate towns. The first bus was hit around 830 Tuesday night. Two windows were shot out. One student had cuts to her face from the glass. Minutes later, Espanol police got another call that a second bus had been hit. Police now believe it was a pellet gun. Happening this morning, police are asking for your help finding a brazen home burglar before he strikes again. This is home surveillance video of that incident that happened back in May near Gerard and Catherine. Police say the video shows the suspect used a crowbar to get inside. APD says that he stole guns, computers, other items. If you have any information about who he is, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 843-STOP. The man authorities say could have killed a deputy remains locked up this morning. Tuesday, deputies responded to a call about an abandoned car at Old Coors in Bridge. They say 45-year-old Ryan Salazar got in that car to, and took off, dragging a deputy at high speed. Salazar got away until deputies stopped him at a gas station yesterday. When deputies tried to stop the couple, they say they rammed three of their squad cars trying to get away. He was taken into custody. On to this story with two days until Balloon Fiesta and businesses are hoping ART construction doesn't keep them from seeing a profit. As of yesterday, the intersection at Rio Grande and Central uh, was still littered with orange cones. The city says as far as ART construction goes, don't expect the entire intersection to be clear. They do say they plan to free up as much of it as they can to help traffic flow during Balloon Fiesta. ART spokesperson Joni Griffin says they will send out a plan tomorrow, Friday, so that businesses in the area know what to expect. Starting today, the Red Cross is expected to be on hand in Belen to help residents affected by weekend, the weekend flooding. Uh, Pueblitos area was hit the hardest by many businesses and homes in the city suffered flood damage too. The Red Cross says it will be deploying a damage assessment team to canvas neighborhoods to see if residents do qualify for assistance. They'll also be expected to be available to answer questions today and Friday at the Old Armory. Today's Metro Threat Index up to a five. We have more scattered to widespread storms on tap. Flooding continues to be a top concern, but don't be surprised to see a little bit of thunder and lightning in the mix, as well as some uh, uh, gusty winds, small hail. It's the same kind of thing as what we saw yesterday. The good news is, though, Metro Threat Index likely to come down significantly come tomorrow and over the weekend. Adam? New facts this morning about high tech cars on the market. Researchers at the University of Utah are warning drivers that information, uh, informational technology in newer cars is putting them in danger of crashing. They found programming a navigational device diverts attention for an average of 40 seconds, while other voice based and touchscreen technology uh, devices take at least 24 seconds. Time now for a check on your Thursday morning commute. Not seeing anything major out there. Moving pretty good on I-25 and I-40. Just some minor slowing as you approach cores, which is normal for this time of morning. Of course, we'll keep you updated if we hear of anything significant. Time now for the five facts. Start with number five this morning. Actor Kevin Bacon is heading to the Land of Enchantment to film a new TV show based on one of his popular movies from the 90s, Tremors. Filming for the pilot is set to take place at the end of this month 
in Albuquerque. How cool is mm -hmm. that? On to number four, Albuquerque City Councilors could soon take up their own sick leave proposal. Voters defeated the controversial ordinance on the ballot by a narrow margin this week. City Councilor Brad Winter says the council is looking at crafting its own version. The ordinance on the ballot yesterday was put together by a group out east, which opponents say didn't work well for our city. Number three, Las Vegas authorities will likely be back in the shooter's hotel room today, trying to piece together a motive. The Clark County Sheriff says it's hard to imagine that 64 year old Stephen Paddock could stockpile so many weapons on his own. Paddock's girlfriend is preparing to spend a second full day in the U.S. after saying through her attorney she didn't know he was planning violence. Last night, people gathered on Civic Plaza to light a candle for each of the 59 people killed Sunday at that concert, including Lisa Romero Munoz, a school secretary from Gallup. And number two, more scattered storms expected today. Temperatures in the 70s. Don't be surprised if some of those turn strong to severe. Top threat will be flooding, although drier conditions and warmer temperatures expected tomorrow. On to number one now. We're expecting to learn more from APD this morning about an officer involved shooting. Four officers are on standard leave right now, and a suspect is recovering in the hospital. It happened late last night in a west side neighborhood. Police said they got a 911 call from a woman who said her boyfriend had just beaten her up and that he was possibly armed. When police got there, officers say the 32 year old suspect would not comply with their commands and made some type of threat toward them. According to APD, officers fired both lethal and less lethal rounds. No word on if a, the man also fired shots, but they do say they found a gun on scene.